If you're rocking an older system right now and are looking to upgrade for the purposes of getting the very best gaming performance, you have a couple of choices. Buying the 5800X3D and sticking with the AM4 platform, or spending more money on a new CPU, memory and motherboard and upgrading to the latest 7800X3D. But does the extra money really warrant much more performance in the grand scheme of things? Well that's what we're going to put to the test with a good old fashioned head to head. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you alright? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together, it's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right, what did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you you realise that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <sighs> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits. Or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver. Thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> you call me the stupid one. So AM4 was a big success since its launch, though AM5 has had a bit more of a struggle, regardless of what you see on social media. And while I know Intel adds another variable into the mix, today is all about the 5800X3D versus the 7800X3D. Two CPUs that are able to harness the potential of 3D vCache to help eliminate any kind of form of bottleneck. Something that's evident in certain games like Microsoft Flight Sim, where even with an RTX 4090, the performance can still look, well, pretty dire. So that brings us to today. It's all about performance, especially when it comes to gaming, but also how much performance to see if kind of warranting the extra cost of upgrading to AM5 and the 7800X3D is worth it over the 5800X3D. Because value for money is, well, everything. You could have the best performing product in the world, but if it costs so much more to buy in the first place, then that whole argument completely goes out the window. And that's what we'll be looking at today. So to test, we've tried to keep our systems as fair as possible in terms of the components used, and therefore for AM4 and the 5800X3D, we use the Gigabyte X570S Aorus Master with 32 gig of G-Skill Trident Z Neo 3600 megahertz CL16 memory. While for AM5 and the 7800X3D, we use the Gigabyte X670 Aorus Master with 32 gig of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo 6000 megahertz CL30 memory. As mentioned, we used an Inno3D RTX 4090 iChill to really be able to stretch the legs of both systems, and for storage we used a Seagate Firecuda 532TB drive. All testing was done on Windows 11 22H2, and all games were tested at 1080, 1440 and 4K. So let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Starting things off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the very high preset and straight away we can see a small percentage lead of 5% at 1080p in favour of the AM5 based CPU, though that lead does shrink to 3% as we move up to 1440p. Then at 4K that lead shrinks again to just 2% in favour of the 7800X3D, which if using an RTX 4090 like we are, this is likely the resolution you'd be gaming at anyway. Next up is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on the Ultra preset, which again shows that both CPUs are more than capable in this title, with the 7800X3D leading the way by 3% in the averages at 1080p, and a slightly higher 6% in the 1% lows. At 1440p the gap shrinks to just 1.5% between the two chips, and now with identical 1% lows. And then a similar story happens at 4K with just 2 FPS difference in both the averages and 1% lows. CSGO was where we started to see our biggest differences on the high preset, though most will likely drop this down to a more competitive graphics preset. It's here that the 7800X3D was a huge 23% faster at 1080p, though at over 700 FPS both CPUs were more than able to handle what was thrown at it. 1440p gave very similar results to 1080p with the 7800X3D coming out on top and showing that even with these fancy CPUs, CSGO is a beast in its own right. Then at 4K both CPUs came in with virtually identical results in both the average and the 1% lows. Cyberpunk is an extremely CPU intensive game and on the high preset at 1080p the 7800X3D commands a 9% lead over its predecessor, though the 1% lows came in nigh on identical. 
As we move up to 1440p, the 7800X3D came in with the exact same level of performance as 1080p, while the 5800X3D dropped slightly, now giving us a 15% performance difference in favour of the AM5 based chip, along with 1% low figures that are now 16% faster on the 7800X3D as well. 4K gave a similar 15% lead to the 7800X3D in the averages, and a higher 20% boost in the 1% lows, showing that it is the far superior CPU in this title. Death Stranding also showed a similar CPU bottleneck when looking at the performance at both 1080p and 1440p on both processors, though the 7800X3D did still manage to secure around an 18% lead over the 5800X3D. And then at 4K, while the margin dropped to around 15% in favour of the 7800X3D, performance on both chips was extremely good anyway. Dirt 5 on the Ultra preset showed impressive performance on both CPUs across all three resolutions, though at 1080p the 7800X3D did come in 18% faster overall, averaging 252 FPS, while at 1440p that margin narrowed to just 10%, and then in a turn up for the books, the 5800X3D actually took the lead at 4K by 3% in the averages and also in the 1% lows. Dying Light 2 on high was a similar story again with the 7800X3D leading over the 5800X3D by just under 6% at 1080p, while 1440p saw that lead shrink to just under 3% as you'd expect. It was again at 4K with the 5800X3D managed to push forward by 4% and then marginally better in the lows as well. F122 on the ultra high preset at 1080p saw almost identical results between the two processors with just 4 FPS between them, though the 5800X3D did come in with better 1% lows, though only with a margin of around 3%, while 1440p came in with almost identical averages, and the 7800X3D pushed forward in the 1% lows by 8%. 4K also came in with almost identical performance in the averages and a 5% lead in the lows in favour of the 7800X3D. In Far Cry 6 on high, the 5800X3D and 7800X3D again hit a limit at both 1080p and 1440p with almost identical figures when comparing each resolution, though the 7800X3D still managed to come in 26% faster at both resolutions. Things settled down somewhat at 4K with the Zen 4 CPU coming in with a 5% lead in the averages and a much healthier 18% margin in the 1% lows. Forza Horizon 4 showed that even with the most powerful gaming CPU on the planet, it still has some drawbacks at 1080p and 1440p, where they were so similar, though at over 300 FPS, well, there really isn't any room for complaints. The 7800X3D still came in around 17% faster overall when compared to the 5800X3D, and it's only at 4K where the gap narrows to 13% in favour of the 7800X3D, but performance on both CPUs is still very impressive. Next up is Hogwarts Legacy, a game that we've only just started to implement after the latest RTX 4060 Ti launch in a bid to show that we do listen to our fanbase. It's here on the Ultra preset that we see the 7800X3D really come into its own, even if still showing some CPU bound limitations. That aside, the 7800X3D still came in 24% faster at 1080p and 22% faster at 1440p, while at 4K that lead shrunk to just under 2% in the averages and 14% in the 1% lows. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn and again, CPU bound performance is still very much a thing, with not much in it when comparing both chips at 1080 and 1440p, though the 7800X3D still manages between a 9% and 15% lead over the older AM4 based processor. At 4K the gap narrows between the two CPUs to 3% in favour of the 7800X3D and with a slightly larger 5% lead in the lows. Next up is Spider-Man Remastered and on the very high preset. We can see that both CPUs give some pretty impressive numbers, though the 7800X3D still manages to come in an impressive 30% faster overall at both resolutions. At 4K the performance again narrowed to just 5% in favour of the newer CPU in the averages and 13% in the 1% lows. So the big one, Microsoft Flight Sim, the one title that takes CPU bottlenecks to the next level and in a really big way. And it's here that at 1080p we see the 7800X3D coming in 32% faster than the 5800X3D, along with a similar but slightly smaller margin of 29% at 1440p. 4K sees the gap narrow slightly to 19% in favour of the 7800X3D, but what's most interesting is that the 5800X3D is still somewhat bottlenecked at all resolutions, along with the 7800X3D at the two lower resolutions. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2 on high and again similar performance across the board in the averages, though the 1% lows are stronger for the 7800X3D in all three resolutions. 
It's only at 1080p where we see the 7800X3D coming in faster in the averages, though only by a margin of smaller than 2%. Lastly, taking a look at Watch Dogs Legion, which is quite a CPU intensive game and on very high, it's here where we see the 7800X3D steamrolling through the 5800X3D by around 27% at both 1080 and 1440p. It's only at 4K where we see things settle down a bit, though the 7800X3D still manages to secure a 10% lead over the 5800X3D. So a real mixed bag with the 5800X3D fighting back in certain games and at certain resolutions, though it was pretty clear to see that the 7800X3D is the faster chip. Now to get a better idea on exactly how much faster overall, it's worth looking at how things line up across the overall averages on all three resolutions tested. It's here at 1080p where the CPUs are working their hardest that we see the 7800X3D coming in 15% faster overall across all of the games that we tested. At 1440p, it's a similar situation with a 15% lead in favour of the 7800X3D over the AM4 processor. And then finally, 4K, where we're more GPU limited than anything, the gap between the two processors shrinks to just 4%. And again, if you're running an RTX 4090, this is more likely the resolution you'd be gaming at anyway. Now, I mentioned at the start that it's a bit of a no-brainer when it comes to the 7800X3D outperforming the 5800X3D. That's a bit of a given. So all I've done here today is oh, prove my point that that is the case. Video done. Case closed, right? Well, there's a bit more to it than that. Now, when we look at the cost per frame, it's clear to see that the 5800X3D across all three resolutions comes out as the victor. It's the cheaper of the two processors by quite some margin, and that's also reflected accurately here too. Now, it's a similar story in the UK, where again, the 5800X3D comes out dramatically cheaper by a margin between 22 and 30%. It's also worth noting that this doesn't take into account the cost of DDR5 memory, a shiny new motherboard, and potentially a new cooler. Add all of that together and, well, the kind of cost argument for the 7800X3D is even worse. Yes, of course, the 7800X3D is more powerful and will be better for productivity-based tasks too. But this video today is all about gaming performance. And while it wins, I have to ask one vital question. At what cost? Now, another big area to look at is power consumption, which again is a bit of a mixed bag. The 7800X3D comes in as the more efficient CPU in certain games like Modern Warfare 2 and even in Cinebench-based tasks, but comes out the more power-hungry in others, though the likes of F1 and Horizon Zero Dawn doesn't seem much between them. As you move up in resolution, it's a very similar story with a real mixed set of results, but nothing dramatically significant in terms of standing out. While at 4K, the 7800X3D comes into its stride a bit and comes out as the less power-hungry processor in all of our tests. Now, what this means for looking at the cost per hour of each processor is that, well, there really isn't anything in it, as the results were so similar for idle, productivity load, and then gaming load tests, while in the UK there was, I guess, a small difference in favour of the newer 7800X3D, but again, nothing that would be of any significance. So how about keeping both processors under control in terms of heat? Well, it's here where both CPUs came in with respectable temperatures at all resolutions. Though it is clear to see that the 7800X3D is the chip that's able to run quite a bit cooler, sometimes up to 15 degrees difference. Though for the most part, the margin between both of these processors that we've tested here today was between sort of two and eight degrees, which Honestly speaking, you would expect for a newer product on a better and more efficient fab process to be the cooler out of the two. So what can we take away from today? The 7800X3D is the better CPU in terms of gaming performance. As I mentioned, you'd expect that as it would be stupid if AMD released a newer product that was either kind of evenly matched or you know, the same. But it's still clear to see that certain titles still present a bottleneck, especially at lower resolutions, which is partly why we wanted to test with the RTX 4090 to show, I guess, the worst case scenario as the GPU hadn't even had a chance to get going at 1080 or 1440p. Now with that in mind, 4K is an odd one to look at as it shows more of the GPU and less of the CPUs in action. But I guess to play devil's advocate, who is seriously buying a 7800X3D with super fast DDR5 memory and the latest motherboard and then pairing it with an RTX 4090, but then only gaming at 1080p? So it's always a hard one for us to 
kind of analyze because 1080p is what processor testing is all about. Now, what is worth noting is that it is clear to see in newer games that the 7800X3D makes the biggest difference. And this could be the sign of things to come as new titles are released that can harness the true potential of the 3D V-Cache and the Ryzen 7000 series as a whole. And that's honestly, I guess after testing these, what I'm more excited about. Now, the crux of it all comes down to the fact that the 5800X3D is the better value chip, not just when comparing CPU to CPU, but also in terms of I guess the full cost of the upgrade path. Now, most users are likely on AM4 or are looking to upgrade from something older. So for those types of users, the 5800X3D is either going to be cheaper overall when factoring in the whole system, or is going to be the cheaper for just dropping into a system that's already more than capable of handling it. Now, upgrading to X670 or similar and changing up to super fast DDR5 may serve you better in the long run, but it is going to be the bigger hit to your wallet now. So right now, the 7800X3D is priced 55% more expensive than its little brother. And that's a big jump considering, well, you only get around 15% more performance at certain resolutions. Couple that with a board that will be around $40 more if looking at B-series based products and memory that comes in around $25 more expensive. And well, that cost just keeps mounting up and up. Now, obviously there will be different types of users and those who can afford comfortably to upgrade to Zen 4 will not fall for the whole, I guess, value for money argument as they will simply want the best and well, at any cost. But I feel most people, and you can comment below to let me know if this is the case, but I feel that most people will be wanting the lowest cost to change. And for that, the 5800X3D is the better, more logical choice, but it has a caveat. After upgrading to it, there really is nowhere else to go. DDR4, 3600 megahertz, CL14 or CL16 memory is the sweet spot. And you're probably already rocking a GPU that can harness the extra FPS performance that the CPU will actually give you. And your SSD is more, like, more than likely not holding you back. So given a couple of years, you're probably going to be looking to upgrade to something newer. And that's where we'll be comparing the 7800X3D to its successor. But at this point, while it will be cheaper, your current hardware will be worth less. So the cost to change may be around the same price point. What I'm trying to get at is, I guess no matter what you do now in mid 2023, your hand may be forced one way regardless. It's just a matter of if that's now or in a year's time. Also on top of that, there's plenty of other CPUs out there that may fit the bill, I don't know, slightly better for you. So I'll leave you with that completely unhelpful endnote because some of the 7000 series non X3D parts are actually pretty decent and are priced very well too. So what will you be doing? Buying a 5800X3D? Are you already rocking an AM4 based system so you can just drop this in? Or are you looking to upgrade to something and this just fits the bill anyway? Or you're gonna be buying a 7800X3D and that whole new setup, of DDR5 and new motherboard. Or maybe something in between. 7700X or something like that. For me, that wraps up this whole video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully it's given you a better sense of which direction you should be planning your next upgrade. If it has helped, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a ton of exclusive goodies, including behind the scenes content, a super special area on our Discord, access to our testing data, and much, much more. The link for all that stuff is down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.